Hi, I am Dr. Bipin Shah. I am a senior consultant radiologist. I am a director as well as a radiologist of the Eclat Polyclinic and Imaging Center in Bileparla West. I have special interest in uh, musculoskeletal imaging and I am immediate past president of Indian Society of Musculoskeletal Ultrasound. Uh, today I am going to cover the ultrasound technique examination of the ankle joint uh, using a systematic approach from the anterior, medial, lateral and posterior quadrant based on the protocol suggested by the European Society of Skeletal Radiology. Examination of the ankle joint can be performed by asking the patient to lie down supine on the examination table or asking him to sit up with the knee being bent at about 45 degree and the sole of the foot being flushed with the top of the table. Periarticular soft tissue structures of the ankle joint being relatively superficial in location, few millimeters deep to the skin surface. I prefer to evaluate these structures by using high frequency probe. Uh, you, you ideally using the hockey stick probe which ranges in frequency between 8 to 18 megahertz. However, if you do not have an access to this probe, one can also use a linear probe with a small footprint having a frequency range between 6 to 15 megahertz transducer. Anterior quadrant examination of the ankle joint is performed by keeping the transducer along the anterior joint line at the level of the talus and the structure which are evaluated on this quadrant includes anterior tibiotalar joint space. Also we look at the extensor tendon of the ankle and also the lateral ligamentous complex. In addition, one can also look at the cartilage covering the talar dome, then this smaller ligaments like talo navicular ligament or the calcaneo cuboid ligament. Anterior talotibular joint space ex examined by connecting the talus with the lower end of the tibia. When transducer is parked in the longitudinal in this plane, one can identify anterior talofibular joint space which usually does not contain any fluid but is filled with the fat which distends the uh, joint capsule superiorly. On the top of this structure, you can see the extensor tendons. By moving the transducer from the medial to lateral aspect, entire extent of the joint space is evaluated for any evidence of synovitis or the uh, synovial hypertrophy. By asking the patient to do a plantar flexion, uh, additional component of the cartilage covering the talar dome can be visualized. So by doing this examination, extending your probe from medial to lateral side, almost 80 percent of the cartilage covering the talar dome can be visualized. However, one point of caution, ultrasound is not the best examination to evaluate osteochondral injury. MRI is the modality of the choice. Once the anterior tibiotalar joint space is evaluated, the next step is to look at the extensor tendon of the ankle joint on the anterior quadrant. So by using the bony acoustic landmark of the medial malleolus, which appears as a hyperechoic structure, one need to move the transducer laterally and the first structure, the first tendon that is visualized in the transverse plane is the tibialis anterior tendon which has got a classical speckled appearance on the transverse axis. This tendon uh, can be evaluated all the way distally to its attachment to the medial cuneiform and proximally to its uh, to, to, to the level of the uh, musculotendinous junction. Once the transverse examination of the tibialis anterior is complete, we need to turn the transducer 90 degrees and visualize this tendon along the longitudinal axis. 
till its insertion over the medial cuneiform bone. So, like any other tendons, this tendon has got typical fibrillary appearance which is due to a bright echoes coming from the collagen fibers and the dark echoes arising from the intervening connective tissue. So, that is the distal attachment of the tendon to the medial cuneiform which can be very well appreciated on the longitudinal ultrasound image. After evolution of the tibialis anterior, the transducer is moved laterally and the next extensor tendon that is identified is includes the extensor hallucis longus tendon which again seen as a speckled uh, structure along the transverse axis and it is almost half the size of the adjacent tibialis anterior tendon. One needs to examine, and examine this tendon all along its length till it inserts over the uh, dorsum of the distal phalanx of the uh, greater toe. Once the transverse examination of extensor hallucis tendon is over, we need to turn transducer along the 90 degree to look at this tendon in a longitudinal plane and follow this tendon distally all along its way till its attachment over the dorsal aspect of the distal phalanx of the great toe to evaluate the integrity of this tendon and make it sure that there is no injury to the distal attachment of this tendon over the distal phalanx of the great toe. Dynamic examination of this tendon can be performed by doing a passive movement of the uh, great toe to look at the excursion of this tendon uh, which, ha which should happen very smoothly in anterior posterior as well as superior inferior direction. After the extensor hallucis longus is examined, we need to move more laterally and between the extensor hallucis longus and the extensor digitorum, one can see the uh, neurovascular structure which consists of the anterior tibial artery and the vein as well as the deep peroneal nerve. So, moving the transducer from superior to inferior aspect, all these three structures can be evaluated very well. Once the evaluation of the neurovascular structures on the anterior aspect of the joint is over, move the transducer more laterally and the tendon of the extensor digitorum longus can be identified which is surrounded by the thick retinaculum and showing a multiple slips. As you go distally, the slips are seen diverging towards the each toe of the uh, uh, towards the each toe of the foot and the dynamic examination can be performed by uh, moving these toes in the flexion and extension. Over the extensor tendon, you can see a hypoechoic thin structure which shows evidence of anisotropy. This is nothing but the extensor retinaculum. This is a superior extensor retinaculum. And when you move down distally, one can also appreciate the inferior extensor retinaculum. The main function of this retinaculum is to prevent the bowstringing of the tendons of the uh, ankle. Other structure that can be evaluated while you are on the dorsum of the foot or at the anterior quadrant of the ankle is the talonavicular ligament. It is a very small structure which appears as a hyperechoic structure connecting these two bones and one can evaluate this structure from medial to lateral aspect for any evidence of injury. Another ligament which can be seen on the lateral aspect includes the calcaneocuboid ligament. This is another small hyperechoic structure which connects the calcaneum to the cuboid. Antero inferior tibiofibular ligament can be examined by connecting two bones that is the lateral malleolus on the lateral aspect and the tibia on the medial aspect. This ligament appears as a bright echogenic structure with the compact fibers connecting bone to bone. The neurovascular structures can be seen superior to this ligament. Once this ligament is identified, one can move transducer more 
superficially and can have a look at the interosseous membrane which is seen connecting the tibia with the fibula. So, in high ankle injuries along with the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, the interosseous membrane is also injured. In order to evaluate lower lateral ligamentous complex structure, one need to keep a small bolster under the medial aspect of the ankle. So, this allows a better uh, contact of the skin surface and patient is asked to move the ankle in a little inward position. By connecting the lateral malleolus and the talus, one can easily appreciate the compact ecogenic pattern of the anterior talofibular ligament and this ligament can be very visualized from medial to lateral aspect by rocking the transducer. While examining this trans, uh, ligament, one can also look at the uh, cartilage covering the talar dome as well as the fat in the lateral gutter of the uh, ankle. In the patient with the lateral impingement syndrome, this structure may show presence of a thick synovitis. The third ligament on the lateral aspect of the ankle that is evaluated includes the calcaneofibular ligament. So, by connecting the lateral malleolus and the calcaneum, one can visualize this ligament. Uh, however, because, uh, because of the obliquity of the ligament uh, in the neutral position, there is a significant anisotropy. Uh, hence, the diagnostic dilemma always persists. To make it visualize more clearly, there is a need to perform dorsiflexion of the ankle. Dorsiflexion of the ankle can be performed by asking a patient to lift the foot above the uh, examination bed. So, after achieving dorsiflexion and connecting two bones that is the lateral malleolus and the body of the calcaneum, one can visualize very well the calcaneofibular ligament which appears as a hyperechoic structure. One need to do a various degree of dorsiflexion to visualize this structure. When the ligament is visualized along the longitudinal plane, the peroneal tendons are seen along the transverse axis overlying this ligament. By using the bony acoustic window of the lateral malleolus and moving the transducer in the retromalleolar groove, two ecogenic structures of the tendon are seen. The one with the musculotendinous belly is the peroneus brevis while the tendinous structure is the peroneus longus and on top of this structure you have a peroneal retinaculum which appears as a hypoechoic structure because of the uh, anisotropy. The peroneal tendons being running an oblique course, we need to have a good contact between the skin and the uh, examination structure. So, lot of amount of jelly needs to be put between the skin and the uh, transducer to avoid any N isotropy and getting a proper uh, isolation of the beam to the examination structure. So, one can see in this retromalleolar region the ecogenic uh, peroneal tendons and overlying the hypoechoic ret peroneal retinaculum. From a retromalleolar region, the transducer needs to be moved in a supramalleolar region to examine these two tendons all the way till its level of the musculotendinous junction for any evidence of injury to this uh, tendon structure. From a retromalleolar region, we need to move the transducer distally to evaluate these two peroneal tendons in the transverse view distally all along its attachment uh, at the level of the peroneal tubercle while the peroneus brevis moves anteriorly, peroneus longus moves posteriorly to disappear under the uh, calcaneo cuboid. Bony projection seen at this level is the peroneal tubercle while the peroneus brevis appears as a speckled ecogenic structure. Because of the anisotropy, the 
detailed morphology of the peroneus longus is not visualized. Once the peroneus brevis is identified, we need to move the transducer distally and follow it up till its attachment to the base of the fifth metatarsal. Tendon needs to examine both in the longitudinal and in a transverse plane to look at the integrity of the tendon. At the level of peroneal tubercle, the peroneus longus is situated posteriorly and by using a proper toggling of the transducer, one can evaluate this tendon all along its short axis till it disappears in the calcaneocubert tunnel or one can also see sometimes os peroneus within this tendon uh, just distal to the peroneal tubercle. Injuries to the peroneal retinaculum can lead to instability lesions of the peroneal tendons that can manifest either in the form of the subluxation of the tendon during the dynamic examination or a dislocation of the tendon outside the peroneal groove. Dynamic examination of the peroneal tendons is performed by doing dorsiflexion and eversion of the foot to look for any evidence of subluxation or dislocation of these tendons while keeping the transducer fixed in the retromalleolar region. For the medial ankle examination, the structure which are evaluated includes the tibialis posterior tendon flexor digitorum longus and the flexor hallucis longus. In order to visualize tendons better, there is a need to put a bolster along the lateral aspect of the ankle. By using medial malleolus as a bony acoustic window, the transducer is moved in a retromalleolar region. The first tendon which is identified is the tibialis posterior tendon. This appears as a speckled structure and one need to examine this, this tendon both in the supramalleolar region all the way till its, its level of the musculotendinous junction. Once that is finish that one needs to move inferiorly and look at this tendon till its attachment to the uh, navicular bone at the distal insertion. Once the tibial is posterior tendon is examined in a transverse view, one needs to turn transducer in 90 degree plane and look at the distal insertion of the tendon to a navicular bone which has got hyper echoic profile. Occasionally one can also see os navicular within this tendon uh, suggestive of accessory ossicle. So one need to examine all the way from distal attachment and move proximal attachment till all the level of the supramalleolar region of this tendon. So adjacent to the tibialis posterior, we have another flexor tendon that is the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus and this is almost half the size of the te tendon of the tibialis posterior and uh, this also needs to be followed distally and proximally in the supramalleolar region in a transverse plane. The longitudinal axis uh, sonography views are not very important unless you find some pathology in this uh, tendon then it, it is necessary to look at this tendon in a longitudinal plane. By moving the transducer more posteriorly, the third tendon of the flexor group is identified and this is the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus. This tendon is situated in the groove between the medial and lateral tailor tubercle. If you want to confirm the presence of this tendon, you can do the passive extension and flexion of the greater trough and this tendon can be seen visual, uh, seen moving backward and forward. That shows the integrity of the tendon. Between the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus and the flexor hallucis longus, 
one can identify neurovascular structure which is made up of two veins that is the posterior tibial vein one artery that is the tibial is posterior artery and the nerve which is the posterior tibial nerve the mnemonic which is commonly followed to identify this structure or remember this structure is tom dick and very very nervous hairy that's the order in which the structures are visualized in the posterior medial aspect of the ankle joint the other structure that is examined on the medial aspect of the ankle includes tarsal tunnel and its contents by turning the color doppler on one can identify the veins and the arteries in the tarsal tunnel and the uh, posterior tibial nerve which is divided in, into branches which is the medial and lateral plantar calcaneal nerve ligaments on the medial aspect of the ankle consists of the deltoid ligament which has got three components the tibio talar component tibio calcaneal component and tibio navicular component the tibio talar component can be identified most prominently because of its significant fat content within the uh, fibers of the ligament by asking the patient to do a dorsiflexion and a connect and connecting two bones that's the medial malleolus and the talus you can see a fan step structure that is the um, posterior posterior tibio talar ligament by connecting the medial malleolus and the sustentaculum talli the tibio calcaneal component of the uh, deltoid ligament is identified by connecting the medial malleolus and the navicular bone one can identify the anterior component of the deltoid ligament that is the tibio navicular component the spring ligament or the calcaneo navicular ligament is identified along the long axis lying just below the tibialis posterior tendon which appears in a transverse view the echogenic pattern of this structure can be well appreciated keep in mind we can see only the superficial component of this ligament the structure examined on the posterior quadrant of the ankle joint include tendo achilles tendon the retro calcaneal bursa and the retro achilles bursa by using the hyper echoic uh, bony landmark of the posterior superior calcaneal tuberosity one can identify the distal insertion of the tendo achilles over the calcaneum which is a fibrocartilaginous attachment once this tendon is identified in a longitudinal view move your transducer all the way proximally till the it turns into a myotendinous junction uh, proximally at the level of the fusion of the uh, aponeurosis of the gastrocnemius and the soleus ten, muscle and tendon once the longitudinal examination is over the probe is turned into 90 degree and the tendon is examined again in the transverse plane all the way from its attachment to proximally till it turns into myoaponeuritic junction one needs to look at the entire extent of the tendon both on the lateral aspect as well as medial aspect to look at the any lesion which may be situated at the periphery of the uh, tendon so it requires that the entire extent of the tendon should be evaluated on the transverse view while on the transverse view also the ap dimension of the tendon is measured to look for any evidence of abnormal enlargement normally this tendon appears as a flat or a kidney shaped structure on the transverse view other structures examined at this level is a retro calcaneal bursa it is a potential space lined by the synovial membrane situated between the distal achilles tendon and the prominence of the calcaneal tuberosity one needs to toggle the transducer from medial to lateral aspect to look for any evidence of a fluid collection or evidence of synovitis retro achilles bursa is seen just above the uh, distal uh, 
tendo achilles between the skin and the paratenon tendo tendo achilles is devoid of the synovial sheath but it is covered by the loose areolar tissue which is called the paratenon which marks as a hyper equic structure which envelops the posterior and the lateral as well as medial aspect of the tendon this paratenon can also appreciated very well on the transverse imaging covering the tendon both on the posterior as well as on the medial and lateral aspect of the tendon the other structure that can be evaluated on the posterior aspect is the posterior tibiotalar joint space and the flexor hallucis longus in the longitudinal plane by moving the transducer medially from the achilles tendon one can visualize the flexor hallucis longus tendon as an ecogenic structure and anterior to that one can also see the posterior tibiotalar joint space and inferior to that one can also see posterior subtalar joint space very well to visualize the tendon in a dy on dynamic examination one need to do a flexion and extension of the great toe so smooth movement of this tendon are visualized when the movements of the uh, toe are performed dynamic examination of the tendo achilles is performed by doing a plantar flexion and a dorsiflexion which shows the smooth excursion of the tendon as well as underlying flexor hallucis muscle belly on the dynamic examination plantar fascia examination is performed by connecting the hyperechoic cortex of the calcaneum and it is seen as a ecogenic structure leaving the calcaneum and situated deep to the thick uh, heel pad the thickness of the plantar fascia is measured at the level where it exits the calcaneal tuberosity the normal thickness is approximately 4.5 mm one need to examine this fascia both in the longitudinal plane as well as in the transverse plane for the identification of the pathology affecting this structure so this concludes the quadrant based approach of the evaluation of the periarticular soft tissue structures around the ankle and using the protocols which are proposed by the european society of skeletal radiology thank you